Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm happy to announce it's tree month in Monet Cafe. Join me this month for some great lessons on learning how to paint trees. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. You're going to learn a lot. We're going to have a lot of fun. And if you would like to support me on Patreon, that would be great. It keeps these free tutorials coming on Monet Cafe. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm very excited to bring you the theme for this month here on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel, also in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook and for my patrons on my Patreon page. And that theme is, drum roll please, trees. Now I'm excited about the subject matter. I've been painting trees for years in landscapes and I've done some tutorials on trees, but I thought it would be neat to take a whole month to focus on tree tutorials. There's so much variety. I love trees. They seem to raise their branches in praise of the Lord. And so I love them. I tend to think of them as people. <laughs> and also too, I'm going to be focusing some on lessons that will be great for the beginner. So here we go. It should be an exciting month of painting trees. All right, happy tree painting. Let's get started. I had a sweet studio mascot. This is my mama's dog, Dasha. There is an actual painting tutorial in this lesson, but first I wanted to go over some of the basics, what to do and what not to do when painting trees. All right, now first we'll get started in talking about how not to paint trees. Sometimes it's good to learn what not to do first. Have you ever done this before, maybe as a child, maybe as an adult, where we paint a tree a little bit like a silhouette or a lollipop, like a green lollipop. Also too, we have a tendency sometimes to think we have to give too much detail, painting literally every leaf on a tree, and often we just add too much detail. I'll also be talking in future lessons about distant trees and how we misshape them often. So this is going to be fun, but first let me talk about three different concepts for painting trees. Now we know trees have a shape. That's what's called a contour. And it is good to go ahead and understand and be able to paint the contour of a tree. Now a way I paint more often is by shape and by value. So often I'll turn my pastel or whatever medium I'm working in uh, to where I can get a bigger stroke or a broader stroke and I will paint by value, by shape and value, large shapes. And so right now I'm just painting the shape of the tree, varying my pressure and also getting in some of the trunk and the branches in to get the same shape but with a different concept. Now a method that I recommend is almost combining the two, where I'm combining contour and value, but I've learned later in my art career to try and capture what I call the gesture of the tree. I'm trying to create the energy within the tree, still focusing on the value and the contour, but I'm trying to create the tree almost from the inside out and from its gesture and its life. Now let me explain a little bit more about the difference between contour and gesture. Now this is real time and I'm giving the contour, a basic contour, of this particular tree. It's kind of like a desert tree. I liked its shape and I am doing the contour now and I think this is how a lot of us, including me when I was first painting, thought of how to draw or paint a tree. I think of the outline of the tree. That's kind of what contour means. And a contour can lack gesture, can lack life. And so I'm going to show you after I do this contour, how to create a tree more with gesture. Now I'm going in now and adding some of the spaces in the tree. And I think this is really how a lot of us think when we're first beginning drawing or painting. Now try to keep that same tree in mind and let me explain the difference with gesture. Often when we talk about gestural drawings, we typically are referring to the human form. The gesture is more of the motion of the form. 
And I find trees, very much like figure drawing, can have a motion and a gesture. And when we learn to create that gesture, the tree, as in the human form, will have more life, more grace, and more energy. So these examples are just a prelude to the painting I will be doing of a tree. Keep these things in mind that while it is good to consider the contour of any element, focusing on this without the gesture and the life of that object that you're painting will result in a form that is flat and lifeless. So in this example, I hope you can see how I, I I'm sorry I took the reference image away, but I tried to create the gesture and the motion of this tree, its curve and its life with almost like a dancer. Our strokes as artists can have energy and life and movement. And fortunately, these things can be learned. I am proof of that. I had the most stiff and static trees when I first started. So don't lose hope. I'm gonna give you some suggestions and advice in this lesson that hopefully will have you creating trees full of life and beauty. And I promise the actual painting tutorial is coming soon, but first I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into something that I have a longer and more detailed tutorial on right here on the Monet Cafe channel called Drawing and Painting Trees. I'll try to put a link or maybe at the end of this video. Now this has to do with math and numbers, so don't freak out though, it's really easy. It has to do with something called the Fibonacci sequence. And trust me, this is really easy math, but literally it is the code that is within nature and how things grow. And in the video tutorial that, like I said, I'll try to provide a link at the end of this video, and it reveals how trees grow, their branches and their pattern. And it's really cool, interesting. I had a lot of my patrons who watched this video say, oh my gosh, I went out and looked at how trees grow. And it really is according to the Fibonacci sequence. Not that you have to draw your trees in this way and you can shape them in various different ways according to the type of tree, but it really does help you to understand better how trees grow and how to better represent trees. So check that video out. Now let's get started actually painting a tree. All right, so we'll start with a pretty common tree shape, which I think is probably like an oak tree. And this is a lovely oak tree from pixabay.com. And I've saved a collection of, gosh, I think close to 90 tree photos in my album. All right, so I'm just using some of my little new pastels made by Prismacolor. I'm also using a sheet of gray tones, Strathmore paper. I've been using this a lot lately. I find that pastels work quite well on it. You can't get the layering that you can get with sanded surfaces, but I still am able to get quite a bit of layering. Many of my last videos have been using this surface. I also will most likely be using my Sennelier Paris collection set have it sitting conveniently right next to me. And um, so I might grab some of those too. So first let's get started here um, talking about or um, creating this tree with some of the concepts we've already talked about thus far using contour, value, and gesture and keeping those things in mind. Now don't get frustrated if these don't happen right away. Um, it does take practice, trust me. I've been doing these things for years and I still need to get better. So I'm looking now, this tree happens to be, I cropped it to an eight by 10, or should I say 10 by eight format. And we've just got a little bank this tree is on right about in here. And I know we've got a, a trunk coming up. Keep in mind that Fibonacci sequence concept and what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna go ahead and mark where the top of the tree is. Sometimes this, this helps if you can kind of get a general idea of where some of these th things are. Oh, it's wider than you think. That's why it's a good idea to go ahead and do some of this. This would be considered the contour. Um, it comes over quite far. This is a wide tree. And um, then it comes in right about here. We've got, uh, comes out with a little um, dark area here. It's hard to tell what part, there's so much green around it's kind of hard for me to tell what part, I think there's a big gap in there. And um, yeah, and then um, all of this comes down kind of behind it. That's what it seems to be anyway. All right, something like that. And um, then on this side, we've got still working on contour. 
Uh, we've got kind of a little thing that comes out here. I can't tell if it's a branch or a limb, but you know what? These things don't matter. The brain sort of figures things out. <laughs> um, so once again, we've got our big shape up here, uh, come in and up here, and a little indention there, and then we're coming in and out here. Like I said, it's deceiving how large this tree is. So that's why it's good to keep an eye on um, your, uh, your proportions of what you're drawing on. And I do think this comes down lower than I had done. So I'm gonna bring it down a little lower and make my hill more like this. We've got a little bit of a shadow, which kind of helps just keep things in perspective. All right, so now we've got a general idea of this tree shape. And um, that's that would be called the contour. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the values. I love using these little new pastel Prismacolor um, pastels because you can just turn them on their side. They're great for sketching. I'm gonna keep it a little bit light, but what I'm doing is I'm just looking at some of the areas of value and they're also kind of gathered in, in clumps in a way. And typically you get darker values in towards the trunk of the tree. So, uh, and usually um, lighter values are towards the outside of the tree. Also too, we can kind of see that the sun is, we've got a shadow cast like over here. So it's probably like this way. We're getting a lot of light like right in here. So uh, let's just get in some value real quick and then I'll keep working. All right, now we're gonna start working with some, some gesture. And um, we've got just a general idea of values in here. I can tell, once again, like that Fibonacci sequence, this is kind of that one of the larger sides to the trunk. And uh, also too, these things skip along. We're gonna have foliage in front of it, so don't make your trunk all the way solid. Kind of pay attention as to where it gets dark, where there's leaves in front, and then, um, you're kind of varying your pressure as to where you put your uh, your trunk marks. This has a lot of foliage in front of it here, a lot of foliage in here, and then we've got some um, some trunks that are kind of turning into branches and uh, coming up little dark areas here, there, and everywhere. And the great thing about painting trees is. Um, it's okay if you get a leaf out of out of place, you know, or whatever. Usually that's okay. Um, so it's not as specific as, say, a, um, a person or a pet. <laughs> so that's a good thing. All right. Also, too, keep in mind that a tree is not flat. It's got three dimensions. We've got branches or masses coming towards us and going away from us. So we don't want our tree to feel flat. Some of these branches in here are um, kind of going off and away into the distance. They're going away from you. So, you know, we can occasionally throw in things that look like they're um, perspectively um, going off in a different direction, away from the viewer. And here there's a, a little area that's kind of dark and um, Got a few branches, a little bit of dark in here. All right, I don't want to get it too dark right in here because I'm going to add some, some highlights in there. It's a little bit more dark in here. And because with pastels we can layer, that's why it's okay to just get a general um, value study that's a little bit dark perhaps, but we know, especially if you're working on a sanded paper, that we're gonna have some layering ability. I wanna keep these outside areas pretty light. 
I don't want a hard edge and I want to be able to do some um, negative painting with some sky holes. Uh, I do want to um, accentuate the gesture a little bit more of this tree kind of going uh, up a hill and uh, it's kind of leaning more that way. All right. So there's a general idea. We've got a little gesture, we've got a little contour, and we've got some values in. That should be fairly easy. I am gonna go ahead just for the heck of it and get in some of this uh, um, this background here. I did like how that hill was kind of coming back. This kind of comes down here, sloping down, and then it goes kind of back here, almost like it slopes up again back there. Okay, and then we've got some other trees back in here. I won't get too crazy with that because this is just not supposed to be too uh, too difficult here. We'll just get some value back here. How about that? Just to suggest something else going on back here. And that's the way it works. Really, when things are receding into the distance, you're not gonna see a whole lot of detail. Um, the color gets uh, lighter, usually duller, and um, the colors usually cool off a little bit. So, uh, so that should be good. I am gonna go ahead and get this shadow in a little bit better. It's like it goes uphill. It's kind of neat, I like that. It goes uphill quite a bit, actually. <laughs> and that really gives it a little bit more of that three-dimensional form. There's another shadow in here, I kind of like that. All right, so we're getting our value in here. And then we'll be able to start adding some uh, color and interest to this tree. All right, now we're going to be giving the tree some form and some value and some color. And later we will be adding the negative spaces in here. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's see what I've got here in my little new pastel selection here. This is, what color is this? Let's test this out here. Let's see, where can you see better? Probably over here. Um, that's a, I don't even know what that color is, but I'm gonna use it to get some value in here. And typically, if you're going to do um, um, pastels as from hard to soft, if that's the way you wanna go. You wanna use your harder pastels first, because they won't layer well later um, on top of the soft pastels. Soft pastels, usually you can get on last, and they're more vibrant in color, and so that's a really a general rule of thumb with pastel painting. I'm not really loving this color. It's kind of too dull, but I'll go ahead and use it to get a little bit more value in here. All right, so we got that going. Now, let's see here. I think I will get in some of these. Um, if you squint your eyes, that's a good way to see things. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get even darker values in here um, with for the tree trunk. A tree trunk doesn't always have to be brown either. Um, you can use various colors. I've got a nice dark here. Let's see how dark that is. That's, a, that's actually a really dark green in the Paris collection. Here's a really dark blue. That's pretty dark. So I'm gonna get this darkest dark. That's pretty blue. Might have to do something with that. And we've got some shadows coming up in here too. Oh, I like how this, uh, sometimes too, once you, um, Get it in, then you can kind of start really looking at where some of the gestures are in the tree and how things are curving or moving. This is when you can start really getting some gestural energy going on in there. It's a little thick there. And all I'm doing is really squinting my eyes and looking at where these, these shapes fall. I notice there is kind of a decent amount of dark going on in there. And I'm gonna go ahead, this is pretty dark in here. I'm gonna layer over it with um, some lighter values. This is still, like I said, back in here, there's a, like a branch that's going back. Once again, like that three-dimensional feel. And I'm just going here and getting in the little areas of dark, kind of scumbling. Scumbling just means making little random shapes and pressure. So I'm getting it in 
And again, there's a pretty much dark in here, in this middle portion of the tree. There's a little decent amount of dark kind of going on up in here. Here, there's really some darks going on here. And notice one other thing, I am not painting or drawing leaves. Um, I have not drawn a single leaf. And we don't really see leaves when we're looking at a tree. Even a tree at this distance is pretty close. I mean, I could zoom in and look at individual leaves, but it's our brain that's imagining leaves. Um, really, when things are far, we don't see the leaves. Oh, when I first started painting, I messed everything up. I I was drawing um, leaves, leaves on every branch. It was just like nuts. Uh, we have a little bit of dark. Well, I guess I'm having a hard time seeing what's part of this tree and what's part of the background. The values are really similar. All right, so that's a general value going on of some more darks. I think I will go ahead and get this dark down in here. This shape, it's like there's a little area right underneath it, and then it comes kind of like right behind it and kind of goes uphill like that. All right, actually, that's not as dark down there. Okay, so there's some more darks in there. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and get some of these middle values of the greens. And I think for that one, well, I'd say middle to dark. Uh, let me see this or this here. That's also almost too dead, kind of like that other little Prismacolor I was using. So I think, let me look over here in my greens. This is a really um, dark green. I think this is a Terry Ludwig. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dark. I may just pop in a few of these in because um, it's gonna give uh, some color interest with that blue. Often it's good to kind of combine some colors and um, not uh, just let a color be standalone. They have so much more interest when you combine things. All right, and you know, of course, I'm, I'm working on unsanded paper, so that means that I don't get as many layers, and so I need to keep that in mind. Look at this green. This is a nice green. It's a dark, but it's um it's a little cooler. So I'm gonna get this in some of the areas like a lot of this is um is pretty dark. I'm just giving little shapes here and there, and um, bringing it down through here. Pretty soon, I think I'll go ahead and add where some of the light is. Uh, there's more light in here than I'm seeing over here, and there's more light here and here. There's some of these darks over here, kind of behind. Once again, three-dimensional, that tree is, things are going back in the distance. And maybe a little bit down in there. All right. I'll get this in just to fill in some of these holes. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and get in more of my warmer greens. See how much lighter I got here? And I know there is some of this up in the top branches here. And there, see how they're layering on top? If I didn't layer that dark down, this light wouldn't have anything to rest upon. And all I'm doing is kind of looking at the shapes. Notice I'm turning different directions too to get uh, the general idea of the shapes of some of these clumps of value. That's really all it is. It's little clumps of value and color. And um, I'm looking at how they're shaped, which directions they're going in keeping some of those darks back there and um, just paying attention. The tree um, starts to take form at this, at this point. Um, that's still pretty dark back in there, but I think I'm gonna hit just a little bit of these lights down in here, a little bit, a little bit. There's a little area kind of coming out here like this. Okay, and then in here is where um, there's some branches coming towards you. Once again, three-dimensional. These are coming at you like, um, like in one of those 3D movies <laughs> where things are kind of coming towards the viewer. It's a little bit down in here. That's still pretty dark. And this is all pretty dark over here. There's a little bit in here that's a little lighter. Once again, kind of three-dimensional coming at you so this tree won't feel flat. And... Um, Maybe a little bit more in there. I can go in and add more darks later if I would, if I want to. I feel like this is showing up a little too much there, but uh, I'll fix that in a minute. I don't want to overdevelop this right now. 
Okay, all right, so um, let me get one more in here. This does have some little bits on the tops here. It's got an interesting shape, and I can get more of the shape of this tree when I um, when I carve in some sky holes. All right, so there's that. Now we're gonna go to a little bit brighter, lighter value, and um, a green that is uh, more like a tree green you would think of. This is probably too light. Let's check it out. Yeah, let's see if I can get something in this set that's not quite that bright. This one is a little bit better. It's a little more dull. Let's see, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna go in here. Now I'm going pretty hard, because once again, I'm working on unsanded paper. I'm losing some layering ability. Remember this one that was three-dimensional and coming towards us? Oh yeah, I'm losing layering. <laughs> um, that's because these are so soft. Uh, Sennelier pastels are really, really soft, and I've got one that's kind of coming out here towards the viewer. Okay, but this is starting to make that three-dimensional shape and form. And then just continue to look for those brightest areas. I think I may go ahead and add some of this in here and do one that's a little bit brighter for these. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of this, some of these areas. Um, this one, like I said, is not all that bright. Just a couple little spots in here. You want to make sure you don't do this everywhere on the tree. If you start doing the same thing all over the place, it's going to lose its form. I have done that. I am the queen of doing that. There's a little spot right here that's got some bright. So, um, who said it? I think I heard Marla Baguetta say it first. If it's everywhere, it's nowhere. <laughs> so, that is so true because then there's no point of interest. It's all the same. All right, so I think I am going to go get one of those brighter greens. I don't know. Do I want a green more like this mm, or green more like this? See, this one's cooler. So let me get some of those cooler greens maybe. Yeah, I like that green. That's nice. Yeah. I go a lot of times for the warm greens and um, I, I think sometimes these cooler greens really look interesting. Okay, now this is the area where it was, to me, if I squint my eyes here, here, and a couple little other areas are the brightest. Once again, they're areas that are kind of coming at you, and um, there's a couple in here. And you could get a lot better results with this if you, um, if you use sanded paper, so. All right, now I'm gonna take this lighter one. This is where I'm gonna add just the lightest highlights. So I've used about, what, four values of greens? Sometimes these Sennelier pastels. Um, when a pastel is machine made, this is something I heard, I can't remember what artist said it. Um, sometimes they have little ridges on them, the machine cuts them. When they're hand rolled, for example, I got to go to Mount Vision um, uh, Pastel Manufacturing Company because it's in Tampa and I live in the Tampa area. So I have a video actually on how they're made and they are hand handmade and rolled. So they have nice smooth edges. All right, so I feel like I'm, I've lost a little bit of the gesture of this tree. So it's looking a little too round and clumpy. So I'm gonna go in and get some more darks in areas, and then I'm gonna carve in some negative shapes. All right, I feel like that bottom of the trunk needs some um, more darks that are warmer. It's a little too cool. Resist the urge to paint what you think is a tree shape. Um, sometimes our brains get in the way, I say that often when I'm uh, painting or teaching. Um, our brains like to paint what we think something looks like, and sometimes um, we're wrong. <laughs> and um, sometimes the thing isn't shaped like we're imagining it's shaped, and uh, it's a little, uh, it gets, it becomes cliche or boring when we 
and we paint like that. Now this is that area where I said there was some activity coming, like moving away. And I, I'm not painting leaves, I'm just doing little shapes. That's really giving the feeling that something is further away. That is quite dark right back behind here. And uh, this one too, see how that's gonna make it feel like it's behind the tree? And I'm not pressing hard, I'm, I'm using varying pressures um, as I paint. Okay. Now I'm going really light here. I knew I wanted a little bit more dark. My um, new pastel wasn't allowing me to get some of that. So I'm just coming into some of the areas where I feel like it's a little darker. And then i um, got a shape here. Let's see. Something going on in there. And keeping that Fibonacci sequence in mind, not that you have to paint things to where somebody's gonna come along and count a one, one, two, so you've kind of got three things going on here. Um, this would probably be more like the one and the two right here. But um, it helps you in knowing the fact that there's gonna be multiplicables and they get smaller as they branch out. So that's usually a really good um, thing to learn when you're trying to paint trees. I, I recommend you do that little Fibonacci sequence thing. This is the point on the Monet Cafe channel where the commentary ends. You will be able to see the rest of this painting process sped up to some lovely music. Now my patrons, if you're watching here and you're a patron, you're gonna get the extra content. You're gonna get real time from here on out. I'm also going to be talking a lot about sky holes, painting negatively with trees, but don't feel bad, Monet Cafe. It's my patrons who actually allow this free content on Monet Cafe and for me to be able to keep doing this. So God bless my patrons and God bless all of my subscribers here on Monet Cafe. I appreciate you. All right, guys, enjoy this to music and I will be back at the end. You can see the final and I hope you are learning a lot. And if you decide to recreate from this tutorial, I would love for you to tag me on social media sites so that I can see your lovely creations. Tag me on Instagram at Susan Jenkins Artist and my Facebook page is The Art of Susan Jenkins. Be sure to find me there and follow me as well. All right guys, here we go.
I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I broke down painting trees in a way that will help you have fun and create some beautiful trees of your own. As always, I'd love for you to share and tag me on my social media sites if you create from this lesson. You can see all of those right there in this end screen. And if you'd like to become a patron, that would be awesome. We have a great family and I love seeing your artwork. All right, happy painting and God bless.